Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Worship and happy November 1st. Today is the 306th day of 2020. What a year it has been. And as we are coming to a close of 2020, just reflecting on this past year, um, let's open up this worship with this praise and supplication from Psalm 67. Read along with me. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God. Our God blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the nations of the earth will fear him. Amen. Let's all bow our heads as Kenny prays for us. Dear God the Father, we gather here today in spirit to worship and praise your name. Through you, all things are possible and there is no power greater than yours. Your wisdom has no limits and your ways are perfect. Your desire is to gather us to you and for us to be obedient. There is no greater purpose than to submit to your will for us and there is no greater security than to put our faith in your love for us. We want to thank you for continuing to provide for us and giving us opportunities to gather as a community and worship you and study your words. You continue to grace us with your presence and listen to our prayers and offering peace in our lives when we open our hearts to the wisdom of your words through the Holy Spirit. And we are also grateful that during this time you give us a chance to focus on our relationship with you, reflect on ourselves to know if we are living the righteous life you call us to live, and to correct our mistakes and discipline ourselves to a life dedicated to serving your kingdom. We now ask that you continue to watch over us and protect us. We pray that you heal those who are suffering physically and to strengthen their spirit to trust in your plan for them so that even in these difficult times, they will know that they can glorify and serve your kingdom. We ask that you continue to guide us during this time to read your words and to pray so that we strengthen our relationship with you and become more disciplined in our life to walk the narrow and straight path. And during this difficult time where human-made movements are working to sway people away from you, we ask that you give us the conviction to not be persuaded to follow human ideals, but to only trust and follow the path you created and to live the way you told us to live. Now we pray that for the sake of your kingdom, you silence those that twist your words and leave people astray. We ask that you show your might by supporting those that teach your words correctly and bringing down those that teach falsehood so that the people may know that you are the Almighty God and we are to treat you as holy. Now we pray for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit as we listen to a sermon by Jane Jonas Henry. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from Proverbs 22, verse 2. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. This is the word of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. You know, it doesn't take a economic expert or analyst to see that there is a huge gap between the rich and poor um, in countries all over the world. You know, some of you guys definitely know more about, you know, the economy more than I do. So I feel kind of silly talking about this. Um, but as I was looking at this verse and meditating on it, it just reminded me about all that Occupy Wall Street protesting that happened back in uh, I think like around 2011 early 2000s you know people it started I think in New York in Wall Street and people were chanting slogans like we are the 99% and they were uh, you know fighting against the 1% of the wealth in this country they were fighting for the economic inequality that they were seeing between us really we're part of the 99% and um, unless you guys are secretly you know <laughs> not telling us how you know wealthy you guys are but we are the part of that 99% too and they were fighting against the social inequality between us and that 1% of the population who owns almost 43% of the wealth in this country so they're saying it's unfair we need not only better wages we need more jobs and uh we need more regulation and things like that but it didn't really realize into anything it didn't really 
you know, it didn't achieve anything. And actually their movement kind of flamed out um, and had no real change. And one of the reasons why this movement failed was because it turned into this kind of theme. It had it started to have this theme that all rich people were evil and bad. Rich people bad. If you are wealthy, you are bad. You are greedy. You guys are villains. And poor people are good. The middle class are good. And and that's the kind of theme that they were uh you know chanting that um it was that kind of idea, a class warfare almost, that was happening. And so their message got lost because it's not about rich being evil, poor being good. And in the eyes of God, that's not even how he sees it either. Um, even now, especially during this pandemic, we say there should be no billionaires. We shouldn't that shouldn't even be allowed. People should not be able to be that wealthy, right? And I've seen uh, infographics and things like that talking about how filthy uh, rich billionaires like Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg, um, they are villainized. And they, uh, you know, because they hold that top, they're billionaires, they hold that top wealth, they own so much of the wealth in the country. Um, and they, you know, use us for labor, abuse us. There's no redistribution of the wealth. You know, there's no regulations and things like that. So some people go as far as like boycotting Amazon um, and things like that because they don't want to support Bezos. They don't want to support his company's policies and practices. Um, and, you know, I don't know how they do that during this pandemic because a lot of people, you know, they probably got more wealthy during this pandemic. Um but if you are boycott one of the people boycotting Amazon, more power to you. I don't know how you do it. Um, and trust me, I'm not here trying to defend the billionaires. I'm not trying to defend wealthy people, rich people um, who, who are greedy. In this same proverb, Proverbs 22, if you read, and I really, again, encourage you guys to read the chapter. Um, it's the, the, the message is the same for Solomon too. He tells the rich, he says, don't exploit the poor because they are poor. And don't crush the needy in court for the Lord will take up their case and will exact life for life. So don't think that you can get away with that because God's going to come for you. Your turn is going to come up too. Um, in the same chapter again, he says, the, the person, one who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, the one who gives gifts to the rich, they both come to poverty. Okay, so I'm not trying out here trying to say like, oh, rich people are great. I'm not trying to like, you know, make them heroes or anything like that. So don't get me wrong. I know that there is, you know, a, a huge gap that, you know, shouldn't be there. But why am I bringing this up? Because brothers and sisters, Proverbs 22, 2. Okay, ESV translation says it this way. The rich and the poor meet together. The rich and the poor meet together. And what? The Lord is the maker of them all. The rich and the poor meet together and the Lord is the maker of them all. God's wisdom and providence has so ordered it that some people are rich. Some people are poor. And some people and most people are somewhere in between. It's God's wisdom and providence that has ordered it that way. He's allowed it to happen that way. Um, but all are guilty before God. We are all sinners. We are all in need of the same God, the same salvation. Everyone needs redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, regardless of our socioeconomic status today, Everyone is welcome at the throne of God's grace. Everyone is welcome. Everybody is equal before God. Now, obviously, um, even though we may be equal before God in the sense that we are his creation, he is our maker, we have that same human essence, uh, it is true and obvious that, you know, we're not all equal in talents, some people are better at certain things than others. You know, we're not equal in our experiences. We're not equal in our opportunities. Some people do have a leg up in this world, right? So that's true. 
some people are just, again, better at certain things than others. And that's part of the reason why that there are these huge, um, huge income disparities between the rich and the poor sometimes. But regardless of all the stereotypes that we've created um, of the filthy rich and all the stereotypes of the dirt poor, uh, we need to start seeing each other in the lens that we share this one important truth that God made our being. God made us. He's the maker of us all. And unlike all the um, distinction that we already make in our hearts when we see those labels, the rich and the poor, those labels, the wealthy, middle class, blue collar, white collar, all those labels drop in the eyes of God. When we get to heaven, there's going to be no distinction. There's not going to be certain neighborhoods de de designated for certain classes. You know, it's all of that is dropped in heaven, in eternity. That's not what is going to matter. The Bible says we, we are the same in the sense that we come to this earth naked. And how do we leave? We leave naked. And while we are on God's green earth, we share the same vulnerabilities, the same sorrows, the same sicknesses, the same temptations to sin. Some more than others, right? There's, there's degrees, some more than others. But we all share those same, it's really consequences of sin, right? And we will all face God on Judgment Day. We share that with all of humanity. Okay, I want us to remember this also. God is a relational God, you know, and so much of what he commands us to do is to build relationship with him, but also with our neighbors, with the members of our community, of our church, of our family. He calls us to live together and live dependent on one another. We can't live without each other. Even though we don't like it, we can't live without the wealthy and the rich. We can't live without the poor. We can't live without one another. We have this dependency on one another. And we need to start honoring and respecting each other. Despite whatever class you're in. You know, we really can't do without each other. Just like Paul described um, that we're one body with many members. Right? You guys remember this from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, this passage where it describes the body of Christ. Well, it kind of works the same way when we talk about the rich and the poor. Let me read this for you, okay? I'm going to read you a chunk of this chapter. So follow along with me. He says, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. That right there. Is showing God's wisdom, his providence, right? In, in choosing who he allows to be rich, who he allows to be poor, right? If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hands, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. Let me read that last part again. That there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. So we can't really say, ah, forget the poor, forget the rich. It doesn't work like that. We are indispensable to one another. It's almost inescapable. There will always be haves and have-nots in a society. In even the most communist society, there will always be haves and have-nots. There will always be a sense of richer, poorer. But God put us on this green earth to cooperate and to collaborate together, brothers and sisters. We are to love one another. We are meant to be enemies at war with each other. We are meant to envy one another. 
We aren't meant to dismiss and judge one another. We're to live in harmony with each other. Especially if we are calling each other as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Um, not everyone is a, a brother or sister in the body of Christ, right? We all share that humanness, that essence, right? But not all people have realized that their maker is God. Our job as Christians is to help those that have been made my, made by God to understand and realize that there is a heavenly father who has created them. And we share that in common. That's really, nothing sets us apart in the eyes of God. We are all his. We are all his babies. We are all his creations. And so often, you know, I see us judging and, you know, losing respect for the poor. We talk so badly about them. And then we complain and we envy the rich, you know. But remember, remember this. God can easily, easily take away everything from the rich in the blink of an eye. God can easily give generously to the poor and raise him up. So that he's no longer poor, but now he's one of the wealthy. God can can do that. You know, it's up to God's wisdom and, and God's divine providence. As we read, God can give riches and poverty to whomever he pleases. <laughs> and, and you know, it's not necessarily our... Um, it's not our... He doesn't owe us an explanation as to why he lets certain people be wealthy, certain people be poor. We can't really complain to God. If we trust that God is righteous, that what he does is good, that he has no guilt in anything he, he does. If we believe that he's good and sovereign, then we can praise him regardless of where we are on that, on that economic spectrum. We can still praise him in the mystery of it all. God doesn't care if we are rich or poor. He cares more about us taking on Christ. Are we an image of Christ? Are we becoming more and more like Jesus? That's what he is more concerned about. You know, are we living upright, brothers and sisters? Are we making a good name for ourselves and in doing so, giving glory to God? You know, are we faithful to the work that he's called us to, to the post that, that we're at right now? Are we honoring him by honoring those he's placed in our sphere? Wherever you find yourselves right now on that socioeconomic spectrum, don't fight God's good intention in allowing all members of our society um, from all different classes to collaborate to coordinate and, and serve one another. Rather than judging or envying, there should be more mutual love and respect for each other. And we should be able to find joy in one another. Um, my joy really comes from knowing, you know, even though that there are super, super rich people out there and, um, you know, unfortunately poor people out there, Something that brings my heart joy is that regardless of where we are, not only are we equal in the eyes of God, but that we are all joint heirs of Jesus. We are all joint heirs of the mighty King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, and our future with him in eternity far outweighs anything on this earth, far outweighs all the riches this world can offer. Our future with him is so much better. And I hope that we can keep our eyes on our on heavenly things. That we can keep our eyes remembering we are just sojourners on this earth. This is temporary. This is practice for what we do in eternity in heaven with him. So keep that in mind. <laughs> you know, especially as these elections are coming up and as we are you know, as we hear, constantly hear about this um, wage gap and, and all this stuff, keep in mind, let's not villainize each other, but let's really love one another. And remember, God is the maker of us all. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. You are the creator of all things and you are the maker of the rich and the poor. So often, you know, we get sidetracked um, by all the issues caused by sin. But I pray that your Holy Spirit will remind us that we are on the same ground, the same footing in the eyes of God. We thank you, Lord, that our money or in our works cannot buy our salvation, but that our salvation was already bought through the life and sacrifice and the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for sending your Son on our behalf. And Father, we now have that same hope of heaven, and it really does far outweigh any of the empty riches of this world, Lord. So I pray we don't get caught up in it. Um, we love you, Father. Our hope is in you, and we thank you, God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. For intercessory prayer this week, let's keep the elections in our heart and in our prayers. If you have not voted early already, I urge you to vote on Tuesday if you can. And not only that, but whatever the results may be, pray that our country accepts God's providence. God's divine providence of who he allows to take those places in government. Announcements this week, we just have the Zoom meetings on Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Uh, we are still reading a psalm a day, so if you guys need a reminder, let me know. Um, and if you guys have your offerings, you guys can send them to the church. You can mail it or you could uh, hand it in to church yourself on Sunday because they are open. They are having service, the KM. So that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Stay safe and have fun. Bye.